composition as well. The wave clear coming in from both these teams. You can see that they want to contest that early pressure. And I think level 2 and level 3 is going to be absolutely bloody in this particular match. Both teams have the heroes available to try and go for those big pickoffs or those big, big skirmishes with the whole team involved. Let's see if that happens early on here in match number one. As both Onyx Esports and Malvinas Gaming, they've drafted a very, very aggressive draft. Let's head on over to the land of dawn for match number one. In match number one, man, I'm looking at the mint lane. How are they really going to play this out? Especially because we saw Franco yesterday, especially with the Legend skin, but he's not using the Legend skin. This, this is a nerf. He's, he should have used the Legend skin, man, because somehow the hook rate with that is like, what, like 80%? It's insane when you use the Legend skin on this Franco. It's definitely a buff if you use that particular skin. We saw Mara pop off on that Franco pick. But here, in the early game, against a Cho and a Luo Yi, it's going to be very difficult because there's not a lot of burst damage available for the side of Onyx Esports. In a prolonged fight, maybe something can be done here. But right now, Keyboy is just zoning Steve away, ensuring that the jungle denial does not happen yet again. Yeah, jungle denial is very, very important. But right now, look, looking at MVG as well as Onyx, it's look like they're not really forcing anything just yet. So... Be maybe because even they see this as a very, very uh, high-risk kind of play, they're playing it a little bit slow. But again, I kind of want to see MVG really picking it up. Once once Prince Fran hit level 4, or once it gets to 2 minutes, I want to see them make a play. If not, they're just giving Kyrie way too much space, man. And right now in the gold lane, CW is doing pretty well for himself. He's zoning away your crew, and without any assistance, it's going to be very difficult for this carry to try and get anything. So already on like displaying a higher level of macro, but look at the mid lane though. Kyrie is playing with fire. It's his signature hero, man. It's his favorite hero to play. And we get to finally see it here at the world stage. But I do want to actually talk a little bit more about that gold lane matchup. Because hey, that's my main hero too. Me and CW, we're brothers. CW, 1-1. <laughs> Up against the carry, you do have a winning lane. It comes down to a bit of a skill matchup, right? It's definitely advantageous for the 1-1, but as long as you dodge from the spinning light wheel from the carry, you're all good to go. You could just all in, and there's nothing Joe Crew can really do if he's solo. And CW has actually manipulated the wave so well to get a level advantage here early on to put on even more pressure towards the gold lane while his team sets up for the turtle. Right now, looking at the situation, Mavinus Gaming, they're, they're really trying to get this turtle. And uh, Harley, I want to see if he can actually get a very, very big pull with his skill, skill one and skill two uh, combo. But looking at the map, it looks like Onyx, they're actually splitting their, their own attention because at the bottom lane, Keyboy is waiting for, for Carry to make a mistake. So it looks like Onyx, they're being slightly passive. They, they, they just want to establish vision and then try to see if they can use that vision to, to set up some kind of kill for themselves. They're not really looking at the turtle, they're just looking at kills. They seem to be trying to make sure that Joel Crew needs to walk up and then want to engage on him using Keyboy on that Franco. But Joel Crew has been very, very patient, just leaving farm out. And now Steve seems to be the main target for the side of Onyx. Steve gonna be caught there by the bloody hunt, and that's first blood over to Onyx Esports. And it's one of the worst targets so for Onyx Esports to get a kill on, right? It's CW on that 1-1, a signature pick. And you could already see the rotations here from Onyx. They're going pretty aggressive. Yeah, like, like I said, right now it looks like they're not really thinking of objectives. They're just trying to rack up some kills. And I kind of feel like they're, they're playing for the mid game. The early stages of the game, they kind of don't care so much. So I'm looking at the second or third turtle for Onyx to really show their true colors. Because for now, oh, Whoa. looks like CW got caught. What a brilliant... Brilliant use of that ultimate from the Lo Yi. Getting to the back, not giving vision at all. And Stiff is here over in the gold lane. Using the way to drag in the lock key boy up. And it's another kill over to Prince Fran. Two kills on the board as Rian rotates back down to save his turret. But man, MVG, they're utilizing the Lo Yi so well. It's a clean performance. That is such a creative use and on the other side you even see Dragon rotate to the mid lane to ensure that the lanes are all still being controlled so Malvinas showing a lot of macro gameplay here matching Onyx in that department that is definitely a very impressive feat. Hey, that's what I want to see but I want to see more of it because 
if, if you understand where Onik is around the map, you have a lot of ways to control Onik with, with the Cho, with the Luyi, and then if everyone's controlled, because looking at Prince Friend, he's not going for a tanky build. He's using no. the, 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 the Mage Emblem, so this is a damaged Karina. So as long as no one really hits her, she could potentially get the first Savage of M4. First <laughs> Savage of M4? It's a tall order, but Malvinus might be able to make it happen. We'll have to see how the fights play out, because so far, it's been skirmishes. In the big, massive team fights. I do think that Malvinus has, in a way, better co of a composition. More crowd control, more AoE. Onyx seems to be a lot more geared towards uh, the skirmishes. And you know, to add on to that, we said it. Onyx Esports into the draft have, have been struggling a bit. We saw it against Todok, and now we're seeing it again against Malvinas. Kyrie gonna be able to steal the purple buff away. And in the gold lane, we're seeing a gank already with Joku flickering out, but still getting hit by the bloody hunt as Drian brings him back with a knockout strike right there. And Steve is gonna be able to actually go up, zone the other members away while CW takes the turret. Prince Frank Ooh. gonna be there. He boy gets a massive hook, but there's no follow-up from Onik Esports. Both teams back away, and Onik finally get that gold lead back into their hands. Honestly, looking at this game right now, I do want as Arashi, where I'm looking at both gold laners, the one one as well as the carry. If we really go towards like I don't know, like like a 17 minute game, which one is is like more 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 prevalent in the late game in this current meta? Is it still the one one or is it the carry? I think carry will be doing a lot more damage. In considering team fights? that in team fights, the damage isn't really reliant on combos and on skills, right? As long as Joel Crew is auto attacking, basic attacking again and again that damage will eventually stack up. And in the late game with full items, that is a lot of damage oh, for both any squishy member or the tanky member. But if Onyx Esports want to actually get CW popping off on that 1-1, one -one, they need like a proper setup, a proper engage. And now it does seem like they are attempting to make something happen. Keyboard is looking for it right now, man. They can see it. They go for the hook. Steve is going to be caught by the Bloody Hunt as well. And that's the pickoff composition that Onyx Esports have built for themselves, right? We mentioned it. In the team fights, they might not be able to actually face off against Malvinas Gaming. Keyboy. But when it comes down to the team fights here, oh, the oh, potential team people, it finds a hook onto Prince Fran. Kyrie jumps in, gets a shadow kill in with the killing spree. And it is just Kyrie going back and forth. Two kills on the board by Keyboy. That's the setup. Dude, that was amazing, like, okay, fine, Legend skin, no Legend skin. It looks like the, the, the hooks are being very, very cooperative for today, and that is very, very smart because he flanked to the side because, okay, I got to make sure they don't see this coming, and that was an amazing uh, play. 1.6k goal lead, Onik is ahead, but again, they're ahead because they're able to kind of like split, uh, split the fight off, and that's great. If they go for a team fight, it might not be so good. So as long as they keep their focus, oh, this could be their game. Well, Harley is going to be caught there as Drian is able to flank all the way. CW is looking for one more. Way too aggressive gets picked off in the process as Kyrie has been going onto the turtle, just poking it down, picking it up for his team. Keyboy now caught. Going to be brought back by his team, but has the flicker. Dragon Ooh. very, Ooh. very close from that iron hook. Is going to be able to back off though. That was a very creative engage, using the stolen teleport coming in from Drian, just getting all the way behind Malvinas Gaming, and then using their own weapons against themselves. Unfortunately, as we saw earlier, CW was just a bit overeager to make that kind of play happen, but Keyboy is already yet again on the hunt. He has his sights set on Joel Crew. Joel Crew gonna be targeted down here as Kyrie jumps in, uses the shadow kill over to Joel Crew, but the RNG does not favor him. It's still gonna be Joel Crew Coleman down. Keyboy running away, CW pops the crossbow tank onto Harley. Ooh. Not gonna be able to find that, and it's actually CW who gets taken down. Dragon still hunting, but that's the way the dragon's stolen away by Drian, kicking Dragon back and to actually disengage from this. Kyrie Ooh. still doing all that he can with those quad shadows, but it is just gonna be a stalemate. Both teams backing off, no more kills on the board. Yeah, looking at that situation, I gotta, I gotta say, man, because CW, it looks like he can reliably trigger the ult, but he's gotta be careful of his positioning because more often than not, when everyone else is backing away, CW is going in front, and that is flashy, you know? Like, you wanna get those crazy kills, but it looks like the damage is not there just yet. He, he got, he's got to be a little bit mindful about when he goes in and where he uh, positions himself. Well, let's take a look at the instant replay for the previous fight. It all began with that play onto Joel Crew, 
and unfortunately for Onyx, it just took a bit too long for that kill to be secured. Yeah. But they were still able to secure the kill, and CW goes for this play, but he lands way too close in the midst of three members of Malvinas. And as you mentioned, Lofel, I think that with this composition, CW can play a, a bit more reactive and use it use the crossbow of Tang as an outplay tool instead of an offensive tool, and maybe he'll have a lot more success in surviving these big team fights. Well, once again, we're gonna have to see how this plays oh, out. No CW mm. is gonna be able to catch them, but it's gonna be CW who's the one who gets slain. Keyboy in the midst of it all gonna be taken down as well. Sprint Fred! Oh my god! What is that? Almost just fading it right amount of time for Dreon to pick up a kill, but Dreon now is able to actually maneuver out. Kyrie jumps in with a double kill, goes in for the shadow kill to pick up a triple, and Kyrie gets it done for Onyx Esports. I gotta say, man, like that that looked cool, but I got to say, mistake from Dragon, he used the split play, he should have stayed close to his team because Kyrie was aiming for just one person. If Dragon was there, there actually was a situation where Malvinas Gaming could have gotten more kills, but either way, great engage, uh, engagement from Malvinas Gaming, but now Kyrie is using this opportunity to try and start the Lord, but it looks like Dragon is not going to let him do that. Dragon on the glue, man. We're gonna have to see how much time oh. he buys for his team as he goes in for that split split, but all doing this points! Oh my god, again! It's Prince Fran who comes in clutch and saves the day. On the esports have nowhere to go right now, but Dragon's gonna be taken down. It's a shadow kill over to Harley, as now Malvinas have to move back. The Iron Hook does not connect. It's gonna be the way the Dragon locking Prince Fran down, and that's a double kill picked up by Dreon, the Lord as well! Dreon is an absolute maniac. monster as he's maniac. looking to claim a no. maniac! But Keyboy, no. his own teammate, says, no, I want some time too. And just like that, that's a wipe out for Onik. What? That was so insane, man. Malvinas were able to actually get the industry advantage. CW was picked off, but it doesn't even matter. With all the resources already used in that team fight, Onik were able to just end and and just wipe yeah. the whole floor with Malvinas Gaming. Kyrie on cleanup duty has been so intelligent with when he goes into these fights. Yeah, this is the show, a little bit of experience because Onik, the moment they saw the engagement coming in from Malvinas, they just backed off and Malvinas kind of didn't get the message because their HP was below half, way below half, and they still tried to fight it out. They kind of feel like that was the biggest mistake. Looking at the player head-to-head -head now, CW as well as Joe Crew, the average KDA for CW as well as gold per minute is looking much better and the average damage per minute, even though he keeps getting ganked, he makes sure he deals the damage before he gets taken down. He's actually been kind of like that tank, right? He's the one baiting out all oh, the yeah. resources, and Dreon has been the carry with Kyrie. As now, they are going to make themselves their way for themselves towards that mid lane with the Lord. Boots trying his best to just delay that Lord push with that top lane being pushed in. Dragon still buying some time, jumps in with his plate, but he got his key boy! My goodness gracious! With an iron hook out of nowhere onto Harley as Kyrie jumps into the back line with a shadow kill, and that's gonna be stiff falling down as well. Oh. Prince Fran's gonna be taken down with a crossbow tang, and it's translated over to Dragon. Onyx Esports with a 9.7k gold lead. They're gonna go for Dragon before they end the game. Now they're still going for it. The winner, Truncheon, was popped in, but it's a wipe out for Onyx Esports as they seal their first win at M4. Congratulations to Onyx Esports for winning the first match of the day. And looking at the game, like, this is the thing about Mobile Legends. It's not how you start, it's how you finish. And it looks like Malvin is gaming, they kind of like let go of the gas a little bit too soon going up against Onyx. And I think in a way, right, in the mid game, it's almost like the opposite. We saw two fights that fell where they were so, so low, and yet they pursued, they thought they had Onyx on the run, but Onyx, they just know exactly what the situation was, they turned it back around. It happened one too many times.